Well, I... Thank you. I do. Thanks. I'm just... I, I'm not going... I just... Sorry, just, just a moment. Hi. Hi, bro. Hey, everybody, this is Brett Crow. Man, this evening would have sucked if you hadn't, you know, brought the music. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I, should, I should get us... This is a little dim. Hang on. Oh, yeah. So much more theatrical. How is everybody doing? I, I, brought, I brought something. I brought something I wanted to try out. Is that, is it, can, I, can, we, can we do this? Is, is that right? It's a, it's a box. You're very, it's, don't make a big thing out of it. You're making the drum roll. Set, Brett, don't make a drum roll. Sorry. No. Technically. This really wasn't planned as an interactive. It'll be smoking. No, don't shush. It's rude to shush, but seriously, shush. Nice to see you. It's good. It's good to see you. All. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay. No, <clears throat> oh. no, 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 no! Do not ruin this for me. Okay. It has been nearly. It has been nearly a decade since I've had hair. It's been, it's been nearly a decade. <laughs> but, but this is a big moment. I have hair now. I have hair. Yay! Optional hair. Hang on. It's good, right? Making it work? Awesome. Okay, okay. Cool. So I've got hair now. That's how I'm doing the show. I've got hair. That's, no, it's, it would be really awkward for all of us, including me. But I found this in the back of my closet. It was living in the corner. Uh, it was, it was, and it was, it was back there. It was actually a part, uh, way back when uh, we had gotten a hold of some costume pieces from a retiring clown. And we all tried it on, and it, as it does now, didn't really work on anyone. But I kept it, figuring we'll figure out where it goes someday. And then this weekend, I put it on my head, and I said, tell it, I'm going to wear it. And I wore it to a gig, and it went, it went really well. It was really funny. Kids thought, you know, a guy with this kind of hair was really funny, especially because, you know, it'll fall off and all these other things. And I, I had a lot of really good laughs. And uh, in, in the midst of doing this, I, I remembered something in, in the DNA of my, of my life, of my history, that, uh, that explained why I knew to do this. I actually had a hair-related experience. And not just that I had hair once and I don't now. I, well, it's not just that I... It's not just that I, you know, I have less now. I used to have a little bit... But... Don't ruin this for me! Hair. Looking good. Yeah. Like a hero. Hair. It's like a drapery clerk. <laughs> no, it reminded me, I, I had, um, I had a, a, a silly... I'm going to have to take it off to tell the story, aren't I? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, okay, we'll try. We'll try. So I had, um, I had this memory of somebody in my life that really influenced me that had hair. And I wanted to tell the story, so I thought I'd bring the hair here to, mostly to get this reaction. Because... <laughs> Because how can I not do that in front of people on camera, right? So, this involves me telling you about Victor. Dead silence, good. Vi <laughs> Victor, Vic to his friends and to me and other people in my age group and, and you know, familial status, Uncle Vic. Uncle Vic, uh, he was a boisterous guy, uh, you know, he was, uh, he, he lived in New Jersey, he retired to New Jersey. That should t pretty much tell you the kind of guy he was. He worked in the garment district growing up. Uh, he was a genius. The man, the man spoke 18 languages. 
Now, I'm told he also could swear and conduct business in 26, <laughs> which also tells you about a lot about the kind of guy I'm talking about. He had seen the world. This was in part due to the fact that the uh, U.S. government insisted at one point in history that he go see the world. And so he spent time overseas, uh, including he got to spend a little bit of time in Vietnam during a particularly conflicted part of history. And uh, there he was exposed to a chromatic uh, uh, ingredient called Agent Orange. And when he, he got home from being overseas, he uh, unfortunately suffered a lot of deleterious health effects later in life, but within the first six months, all of his hair fell out. And he was, he was a young man. I mean, it was the prime of his life. He just got back. He was a big strapping guy. And, and he, he went bald. And um, so he decided to take a little bit of his money, and he bought himself a toupee. Now, mind you, wig technology, toupee, wigs, it's come a long way in the last few years. The, the, the era in which he made this decision, it was more of a rug. Yeah, it was a bad rug, and he was really really sensitive. I mean, way more than I'm sensitive about this. I mean, he was really sensitive about this. And eventually, I mean, I met him as part of my extended family later in life. Uh, you know, still very young. And I was told, we're going to a family reunion. You're going to meet your Uncle Vic. Do not talk about his hair. <laughs> now it's all I want to talk about. <laughs> it's like, don't even look at his hair. Try not to right now. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? I know, it just... And draws out. Oh, so all I can think about is I have no idea. But this man was really sensitive about this. And so he, uh, he was there, and I saw him, and he walked out, and he was majestic. Strapping hero, a little older, prime of his life. His hair was jet black with a white skunk stripe down the middle. And I said nothing. And everybody just looked at him. And he walked around. Everything was just calm. Everything was just fine. And he excused himself probably to get a beer. He came back, and his hair had changed. It was spotted like a jaguar. <laughs> now, I don't mean like he had a wig that kind of looked like a jaguar. It looked like a pelt. Something had died on his head. <laughs> and, like, the sideburns were cut so they kind of looked like ears. <laughs> and everyone is doing everything they can to not comment on Uncle Vic's hair, because we're not supposed to, because he's really sensitive about this stuff. Don't look at it, they said. <laughs> I'm like this. Finally, he excuses himself again. A little while later, he comes back, and he stands out in front of everyone, and his hair is like a peacock. It is electric blue feathers. <laughs> he looks at everyone, and everyone goes. <laughs> and he goes, gotcha. <laughs> when he, uh. When he, when he finally passed, he found out that he had dozens of, of, of novelty wigs, and he would wear them to uh, make his kids laugh, make his nephews laugh, and teach me this lesson. I brought it here tonight because I think it is without question the, the best example I could think of and the best reminder I could have hoped for that whatever your vulnerability is, whatever your weakness is, whatever your flaw is, if you just embrace the crap out of it, it will become the funniest, best, most beautiful thing about you. It's really easy in, in our heads, in our, you know, in our, in our lives, hell, up here, to just kind of polish everything up, to clam up and close up and, and you know, become really smooth. But we lose out on the stuff that makes us human and interesting. Yeah, maybe a little vulnerable, but... That's the stuff that we came to live theater for. Otherwise, we would have stayed the hell home. So I know a lot of people take the time on the stage, and so I wanted to take a chance before the show started to say, get up here, be real. This place has your back, because we call it the open stage. Welcome. <laughs>